Okay, uh, today we're going to test a solenoid valve. Um, these are the things that go wrong. One of the most common faults with a shower is the solenoid valve. The, this is the valve that um, they use where the water comes in. Usually what goes wrong with these valves is the coil becomes faulty. And the way to check this is you check it for resistance. Before checking it, you must make sure that the power is switched off at the isolating switch and preferably pull the fuse from the fuse board and put your fuse in your pocket. That means no one else can go and put it in when you're not there. So you need a meter to check it and you need it set to, to ohms, K ohms. And basically to check it, you just put it on the two terminals of the solenoid and you should have a resistance of over 3.5. I don't know if you can see that, but that's got a resistance of just over 4. So it's good. Nothing wrong with that solenoid. And um, just the same, all, all, all of the better showers have a solenoid on the inlet uh, as this one. This is a red ring shower and here we go, just check this solenoid here. It's a good solenoid as well. And finally, a Triton Topaz. This is the one that we'll change the solenoid on. And we'll check that. A little more difficult to get into when you're checking, but we can just get into the edge of these terminals there. And I don't know if you can see it once again, it's a good solenoid, but we'll change this one anyway. Um, so normally we'd recommend changing the whole valve. And it's always more sensible to do that. However, that practically it's often better just to change the coil. And to do this, you must make sure, as I said before, that the power is off. But to change the coil, although you don't need to turn the water off, you should make sure that the water is turned off because you can have a little accident here. I'll explain in a moment. Now, with many showers, to get the solenoid valve out, you have to change the coil, you have to take the complete valve out. As you can see, this valve pulls down out of the stabiliser valve here and th there's no way you can ease this coil off. So you'd have to take the valve out. In this particular case, you'd be far more sensible changing the whole valve because you've got to take the valve out to change the coil anyway. With the Triton, that we have this rather interesting little plate at the bottom that comes away. It means you have access to the solenoid. And you'll find that quite a few showers have this kind of access. And all you need to do to change the coil is to slip the screwdriver down here and down here and ease gently forward. And this will come forward like that. The reason for turning the water off is this part in here is glued into the main body of the solenoid. Occasionally that glue cannot, sometimes isn't as strong as it should be. Therefore the whole thing can pop out. That's why you must make sure you have the water turned off. And basically the solenoid really just should just pull out like this, disconnect the two terminals, and uh, here we have a new solenoid coil that push the terminals back on, like so, and then just pop this back into place. Now there's notches here, I don't know if you can see there's a pin and notches because the solenoid and different valves are orientated in different directions. This one goes in here like this. And that's it firmly located into its notch. And there you have a new solenoid ready to go. Um, Does it matter which way the wires go back on? And solenoids generally not, however it's always more advisable to put them on the way you take them off. And the way to make sure before you start any of these jobs is to take a couple of photographs then you um, you can be sure you're going to get it correct when you go back when you put the whole thing back together so now all you need to do is turn the water on put the fuse back in the fuse box and turn the um, turn the turn the isolating switch on and you should have once again a perfectly good and working shower